Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the first part of a series of reflections on the concept of involuntary sin. Involuntary sin. I remember the very first time I heard those words in the Byzantine Rite, about 20 years ago. The first time, actually, I'd ever heard uh, the Byzantine Divine Liturgy in English. And it was celebrated by the man who is now my abbot, Father Abbot, uh, as he now is, Nicholas Zachariadis, back in Australia, a little chapel in Sydney. And I was there, fascinated to hear the words of this liturgy in my own language for the first time, and of all the words, these two words struck me the most, involuntary sin. And I remember after the liturgy asking Father Nicholas, what does this mean? How is it that we can be asking the Lord to forgive us, not only for the sins that we wanted to commit, that we knew we were committing, but also for the sins that we didn't want to commit, even the sins we didn't know we were committing. Doesn't that put so much more of a burden on us? And the way Father Nicholas answered that question set me on an intellectual exploration that I'm still on in a way 20 years later. He said, Michael, as I then was, Michael, you've got to understand that in the world of Greek patristic theology, we're not Augustinian. We're not looking backwards. We're Irenaean. We're looking forwards. What makes a human being holy is not just that they go back to some primordial state of purity, but rather that we are always going forward to become more and more and more like God. That's how he put that. That's how he explained it to me then. And I wondered whether such a, an explanation could be borne out from a study of the patristic uh, sources. And what I'm going to do now is take us through a series of reflections where I think I can vindicate Father Nicholas and say that indeed from the perspective of Greek patristic thought, the fact that we constantly in our services ask for forgiveness of all our sins, voluntary and involuntary, is precisely because we have a vision of what it means to be a human being like God. That there is a capacity built into human nature that gives us the ability to become like God through grace. So that's what we're going to be talking about. The phrase itself, sins voluntary and involuntary, is a very ancient one. It's been with us for a very long time. Certainly I've found it in the Syrian liturgical texts collected together called the Apostolic Constitutions, uh, a 4th century work. I certainly haven't done a scientific study to find when the very first time this phrase comes into the manuscript sources, but it's certainly very old, at least back to the 4th century. And in those, it appears several times in that collection of liturgical texts, which suggests that it goes back further than that. It's several times present in the oldest manuscript we have of the Byzantine liturgical texts, the so-called Codex Barberini, a 9th century manuscript. And it has many appearances in the modern printed texts of the Byzantine liturgy. All of which certainly goes to show that we are dealing here with a phrase, sins voluntary and involuntary, a phrase of great antiquity and of liturgical durability 
It's strong, it stays. And theological utility. It's useful. In other words, this phrase, sins voluntary and involuntary, suggests something very important, right at the heart of Eastern Christian thought. What is this important something? Well, in this series of reflections, as I say, I'm going to look at how our tradition in the East understands that all involuntary acts can somehow contribute to a person's sinfulness or their sanctification. My basic argument is that the notion of involuntary sins opens a window into the moral vision of the Eastern Christian tradition with a distinctive concept of sin and more significantly of the potential for human nature to attain real transcendent goodness, divinity. In other words, as Father Nicholas said to me 20 years ago, we're not looking backwards, we're looking forwards. Holy God.